Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast. And now here's the guy who's yet another old child man, Rob Cicerino. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Survivor Post Game Show. Boy, we've got a great one here for you tonight after a very, uh, it was, it was a long night. We, we had, we had to finally put Survivor Banu out of his misery. It finally happened here tonight. Here to talk about it all with us, a woman who, when given the choice to win a million dollars or a million hearts, she said yes. It's Marion Okich. Marion, how are you? I am doing great, Rob. I, I don't know. I've been thinking after watching the episode. I'm like, did I make the right decision? Should I have gone for a million hearts rather than the dollars? You got a million hearts, though. Oh, I, it was a two for one deal. Yes, two for I, one deal. You won. True. You won our hearts. You Thank won you. the money. Thank you did you. it for the weirdos. I did. I did. So I guess it was a two for one deal. So the hearts and the dollars. But it's yes. great being here. Love the episode, and I can't wait to just break oh, it down with you. I'm so happy to hear that. Okay, and of course you won one heart in particular, the bride yes. to be, Marianne. Mm -hmm. I'm a finance girly. For only like 20, what, 19 days. A finance girly. Yeah, finance. F-I-N-A-C-E. Yes. Okay. All right. Marianne, let's talk about this all here tonight. Of course, I'll, I'll talk to the man of the hour, Banu, mm -hmm. tomorrow. We'll see if Sia pops in as early as tomorrow morning. It's a non-zero chance. It is Wouldn't a non-zero chance. Oh, yeah? Yeah. When was the first time she popped in, like, mid-season? Oh, well, never mid-season. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, non-zero chance mid-season. Because I know she's popped in. She popped in, what was it, Caroline's With interview, Carolyn. right? Yep. Yes, yep, yep. And so we'll see what happens tomorrow. Uh, and then Stephen Fishback, of course. Uh, so be on the lookout for that on a big Thursday. All right, so, Marianne, let's get into this. You said you loved the episode. I did. I did. I loved how it was really, it really emphasized the rawness of what Survivor is. We were watching it, especially after Tribal. We saw the perspective of Banu having to know his game is ending and begging to be there. But all of his tribe mates were like, this is a game that we we see your pain, but it's like, we, we can't help you there. And like a lot of other people said, it's like, I saw the five stages of grief, denial, anger. We saw bargaining. We saw depression. And then at tribal, we saw acceptance. Wow. You put that so beautifully. Thank you. This Thank journey you. that we've been on with Banu. I, the, let me just say to the people, I, and I know that people are very down on this season and Chappelle and I on club condo the other day, we were talking about it like, Hey, like it's, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, even I, t I was like, all right, this is getting, this is a bit much here oh. with, with the, with Banu's journey. But I will people say are down on the season. People are down on the season. Yes. Oh, wow. Not every, I'm not going to say universally. I'm not going to say okay. not, all the survivor okay. fans. Okay. But the, but the, okay. No, I've, I've, I've come to the point where it's like, I've, don't I just I'm like the filthy casual I watch I enjoy I talk mm -hmm. about the strategy but then if I enjoy it doesn't matter what other people are saying but it's interesting I'd love to like we can explore that and the reasons yes, why let's explore that. but I just want to say to the survivor fans like here is the best news of all okay the Banu chapter is over <laughs> yes that With was all due respect to Banu who is seems like a lovely person okay that but but his journey on our television where we have seen the plight of Banu for seven mm -hmm. hours <laughs> has mercifully come to an end. It's true. It would, if you if you weren't a fan of Banu, then it would I could understand how the past two weeks might have been a little yeah. rough for you. And, and I don't even want to say not a fan of his. Yeah. I really felt like after last week, yeah. I felt like, okay, Banu, Banu is on a trajectory to the final three, Marianne. I, I thought I thought that actually. I thought he was on a trajectory to the final three if uh, Yanu won this tribal mm -hmm. or if they actually went to tribal last week. And I was actually thinking about it, like not going to tribal was actually the worst thing to happen to Banu because we found out that yeah. it was going to be Kenzie it that was like going to home. How, exactly. how about that? And honestly, it seems like that the miracle 
ultimately was was to save Kenzie. Exactly. It, and it, it saved Kenzie and it helped as well Tiffany's game because Tiffany found out, wait a second, I was about to go cut off Kenzie when I found out that Banu tanked my game. So yeah. it truly really was just, it was a miracle. Well, you know, for for, for the one for who- Kenzie. For Kenzie, exactly. Yes. Okay. We are four weeks into this Survivor season. Marianne, mm -hmm. okay. At the risk of being hyperbolic. Yes. Is Yanu the worst Survivor tribe ever? Oh my gosh. Okay. I, I, let's cross the ever. That's always like a pet peeve of mine when like people just go with one episode and they're like, is this person the worst person to ever play? Like, for example, we heard it in episode one when Jelinski votes voted out. People are like, is Jelinski the worst person? The best, that you, the the best, best ever play. The best ever to play or the worst. And I'm like, okay, people, like we're not going to come on. Or as uh, Connor said, it's like, I think that it's like the best and the worst ever. But what we can say though, is that Yanu truly is not doing well when it comes to the challenges. I think this is the first time yeah. that only one tribe has gone to tribal in a three tribe format. So like four, like in the episodes and usually it's like one or two. And like, I can at least say yeah, for the well, new era. It was Matt saying, uh, yeah, in, in the old era. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 Without and they went over four also. They did. They did go for four. You're so right. And I don't remember if, if Matt saying won a, or even competed in a reward challenge. I don't think I they mean, competed in a reward. I don't so remember. This season, and tonight we did see mm -hmm. that, uh, that, Yanu actually came in first place mm -hmm. in a reward challenge. So I think that that helps their case to not be exactly. the worst ever. Exactly. But I think this more points to the point, not about Yanu, but about the flint and the sweat and savvy. Yes. Yes. Cause one thing to note is that starting from season 45, I feel as if the sweat and savvy curve just like it drastically got more difficult. In 45, they had to do the sweat and savvy. And then in 46, we can't, um, then the puzzle was just, it had extra logical steps where if you weren't thinking about it, it might have been difficult to figure mm -hmm. it out. And then we're really seeing now that for those tribes that don't win the sweat and savvy and don't have their flint by the end of the first tribal, they're really suffering. We saw that with Lulu last season, yeah. how they were really suffering. And we also saw it again now with Yanu. They didn't have their flint. And I'm not sure if it's a morale thing, if it's a energy thing, but it seems that like not having that one win before yeah. you go really like ruins the momentum for some of these tribes. Well, Marianne, can you talk about the importance of fire? Because yeah. I had seen it just on the Twitter app this week. I believe it was High who tweeted out about how you were the uh, camp fire ranger. Yes. And, uh, you were on you were on fire watch and you kept that fire going. And yes. it was so nice for the tribe. So yes. just because I've also seen survivors in the new era that you don't even need fire. Yeah. Okay. It's overrated. You don't need it. I think for me do you need fire? I think the answer is no. I do agree with my other new era players. It's like, you're not really getting rice to cook. You don't really have anything that you need to cook that you really need fire. But what I do think that fire is very important for is that morale, especially like if it's cold at night, if you're right, if it's raining, you can then think, okay, I can start a fire and then I can get warm. I can feel better. Especially for me, I was someone who slept next to the fire pit. That was my warmth. That really helped like me in the mental part, in the moral morale part. And it also helps as well too, I think fire is very important, especially when it comes to tribe bonding. And what I mean by that is that a lot of times in the early um, in the early days, when you're collecting firewood, it becomes like a tribe task, something for you to do. And that can really go and help mess and gel. Like in Taku, we all had roles. Like I would go organize the fire, the fire sticks. I get the fire sticks at night. We'd all collect firewood. So it really helped and that gave more times for bonding. That really, I think, helps with the morale of the gel, like the gel of the morale and the gel of the team. So I think that fire, like, yeah, can you survive without fire in the year? Yeah. But I do think that there's a really important, like, morale aspect and like tribe synergy aspect which makes it difficult that if you don't have it yeah um let's talk about banu here tonight mm -hmm. it looks it looks so promising for him at the start of the episode mm -hmm. and that for one it was interesting like the episode ended and we were like right back to immediately after jeff left and we don't typically get that on survivor where mm -hmm. it's just like moments after jeff left in the last episode and he could not enjoy 
but a moment of success. Uh, instantly, he said, hey, I have to tell you, Tiffany and Q, at the journey, I told them that Kenzie is a mastermind. I think that that was fine. They, they, they could have lived with that. He's like, and then also, I told them that you two have a very close connection. Yeah. Um, I think with Banu, like he said, and like other players on his tribe said, he didn't really understand the game of Survivor. And like the way that the wavelengths that he was in and trying to play and the wavelengths that other the other players were trying to play were just not in sync. With Banu, he just saw he had his big break. Like, of course, this is conjecture, I'm assuming. But he just saw he had his big break. He's still able to go and stay in this game. And he's like, I'm in the game. I want to go and build trust with you. And as someone who says he's honest, how do you build trust? By saying the truth. What's going to happen? But... What he said there was a negative thing, especially in the gamer aspect, because if you say these people are really close as someone who understands the game, you're like, OK, well, then I guess like when we get to merge, I'm an immediate target. So that seems that instead of Banu coming and being like, yes, I'm honest, Banu basically said, hey, I'm not good at the game. I can't keep a secret. And I want to let you know that out of the honesty. So it could really raise a lot of red flags and immediate. And I think the really big problem, too, is that. They were going to vote Kenzie out. And yeah. immediately when they found that there was no tribal, they found out from the source themselves that it was not a good decision. I think that's just like that. Finding out that immediately must be something where you're like, oh, my gosh, like, thank goodness. Marion, I loved when afterwards he said, um, did I say something wrong? <laughs> yeah. You know, you say the truth that you think you're going to get a pat on the bat, but it that pat on the back. But yeah. it it was it's I think it just shows even how badly that was in a strategic sense that the of the Tiffany and Q couldn't even keep it off of their faces about how much of a bungle that was. Yeah, really uh, a bad move. And he he cited this as like, you know, you have five seconds of honesty and it can completely <laughs> ruin your whole game. <laughs> just that five seconds. He was five seconds away from being fine. Yeah, um, I feel as if there were other aspects of the game that might make people want to vote him off. But I do think that the five seconds yeah. really did just seal the fate of that we are doing no more wiggle room. Like they like because that solidified where it's like, okay, saving Banu, it doesn't even matter if Kenzie is like a threat in the long run for Q, because Banu, it's like we cannot work with Banu. It's just not gonna work. Yeah. He threw us under the bus. And especially thinking, because around now people are thinking maybe the merge is like two, three more tribals away. If you're thinking about that and you have this person who just threw you under the bus, if Banu is there, there is a very high chance that Banu will stay over the other players. But if Banu is gone and you now have these three targets, you now have Q, Tiffany, and also Kenzie, there's now a chance that maybe they won't choose you. They'll choose someone else out of the three. So even then, voting out Banu makes sense in the long run, especially because Banu put that target on their backs. Yeah. So, Marianne, I want to go back to this idea of, okay, with that we need to keep Banu. Banu mm -hmm. is a liability, but we can fix him. And, mm -hmm. and I'm really, I'm really talking specifically about Q because it yeah. seemed like that through the first three episodes that both Tiffany and Kenzie were both like, no, Banu is has mm -hmm. to be the one to go. But Q seemed to to really feel like that he had this idea that he was going to take him to the end and he was going to be the fill up to his Boston Rob. Mm -hmm. that, do you believe that? Can you take? A, a player like a Banu and, and turn him into something? Can you coach a player into being an asset? Can you coach a player into being an asset? I think sometimes yes, but it depends on what the player needs coaching for. You know, mm -hmm. Banu's biggest flaw, I think, is that he like game wise is that he wore his heart on his sleeve and he valued honesty in a game where you have to strategize with people. And sometimes what you want to do emotionally doesn't co conflicts with what you want to do mentally. It can be such a big clash. So if you have someone who is very emotional, wears their heart on the sleeve and has been clear to say that time and time again and wants to play that way, you might not be able to coach them. Mm -hmm. If Banu, let's say, was like if 
if the problem was that and it wasn't that he was super emotional and wanted to play the game with his heart, but let's say, for example, he sometimes slipped or was too upfront at tribal. Those are things that you can coach. Those are things you can work with. But then I think the problem, so like you can do that, but I think the long-term problem as well too is that new players in the game of Survivor understand they watch the game. They understand the game. So if you are very clearly coaching someone in the game, they will know that you are probably going to beat them based on that relationship. So mm-hmm. even in the long term, that's not going to work. So having someone where it's like it both, even if it's incorrect, you both the both people perceive that you're maybe on equal terms is better. So I personally do not think that coaching as a player is something that's good, especially if you do it so obviously, because it's like, if if I was playing Survivor and Omer said, "Hey, you're the Russell, you're the you're the Philip to my Rob," I'm gonna be like, "Okay, like goodbye." So the, is I, that I, what happened? In in the in forty six, yeah, that's what happened. In oh, I thought that's why you got rid of him. No, no, I got rid of him because I was the Philip to his Rob, not because he, didn't he have said to say it. no. Knew. He didn't have to say it. I knew. Yeah. Um. Going back, and and we've been talking about this all season because Mm -hmm. this tribe has gone to tribal council uh, again and again and again. And shout out to Sifu, who's in the chat tonight, says Marianne (laughs) with the facts. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Sifu. Shout out to Sifu. Um, Should Banu have been voted out first, even over Jelinski? Because it was between, who was it between? Jelinski and was Banu, right? It was between right? and Jess. Banu was not oh, even Jelinski in the conversation. Jelinski and Jess. No. Like, no. I, you didn't, we, I think people didn't understand how Banu played until Banu went to that first tribal. Banu was someone who was- The second tribal. The, the, no, the first. The oh, first when he literally was like, Jelinski, you're going home. Let's oh, go to vote. Okay, it was, it was the first tribal. Like- so I it was worse on the second, but on the first, the seeds were already being planted. Yeah. But before that, how are you supposed to know that someone's like someone's that that sort of player? Like he wasn't in the situation where he had to play in that in that paranoid place, especially because he knew that he was safe at the first tribal councils between Jess or Jelinski. So like Bonnie was just like, okay, just between A or B, like I'm fine with whatever. Like you don't, you're not able to pick up on that. I don't think mm-hmm. he like, so I think that it's unfair for the players to be like, you should have taken him out first because there's no information that said that he should have been taken out first at that point. Okay. All right. Let's move on to our post-Banu world. Mm. Uh, for, for Q and Tiffany and Kenzie, okay, that is the worst behind them. Do you think that they can potentially go into the merge and have like a Tika-esque run? Or do you think that after Banu has now planted these seeds against them that uh all three of them are going to have a very hard time i think that once the merge comes and i believe that still the earn the merge that's my assumption gonna happen um i think that the big problem isn't going to be those three they're not going to be the big issue the big problem will be like okay we have is it we have sega which has six people at this point. And they clearly seem that they're close together, at least from what we're seeing on screen. So I think that Nami at, will go to Yano and be like, let's just take out a Siga for now, make it equal, make it even. So I think they at least have one tribal where they can keep play it safe unless the split is a very unfortunate split. Yeah, it'll be interesting. But um, the three people that are coming over from uh, Yanu in Kenzie and Q Mm -hmm. and Tiffany, that they all seem like really good players. Like, I Mm -hmm. wonder, like, where, you know, the Tika three, they Mm -hmm. basically, in in their own way, they all had, like, camouflage where Mm -hmm. um, that maybe people didn't necessarily take any of them seriously as, like, major threats to win the game. But... I feel like that you look at Q and Kenzie and Tiffany Mm -hmm. and all three of them look like very serious players. Uh, I'm trying to think about, I feel as if it really depends on the split and the players, because when you're so close to merge, when you're so close to jury as a player, that's something you feel, you know? And it's like really depending on the, like maybe if people are just like, let's just take one of purple out, 
then they will go and they'll be voted out if it's an easy vote, like something like a Caleb-esque vote, right? Mm -hmm. But it could genuinely happen depending on how Siga starts onto the tribe, depending on how they hit the merge beach, what the energy and the vibe is. It could really, I really still do think that if there's a split, that they might just go be like, we'll figure out Yanu later. We we have the numbers. Let's just keep them for this vote. Let's just cut off a Siga so it's not a problem. I think that that's still a possibility depending on how Siga portrays themselves when going to merge. Because I like I, I can't speak from experience because it was 444 when we went to the fake merge. But numbers is always a scary thing. Especially mm-hmm. like once people have relationships and they're the only people who are there. We've seen it time and time again. Like people usually... P- play with the people that they know with with 41 42 43 pretty much all the season so i think that there is a chance that they squeeze by with one more vote okay. i'm I, I believe in them all right i want to talk about nami because mm-hmm. i thought that uh, maybe we were going to get them going to tribal council in mm-hmm. this episode mm. and so we had where Soda, we got to see that she's got this great social game. She's working with everybody. Everybody's feeling pretty good about Soda. Mm -hmm. And we saw that Tevin is saying, okay, she's too good. We Mm -hmm. might need to target Soda. Soda has got to go to, he said to Liz. (laughs) Marianne, is it too early for Tevin to be thinking that way? Yes. I think, I personally think that it's too early. I think that um, especially when you have someone like Venus who you feel isn't as integrated in the tribe, that is always a flight risk, you know? And I love Venus. You know, I always root for the Canadians. I want Venus to win. But just like on a cerebral note, you want to make sure that you get rid of your flight risk so you have the strong numbers. So it doesn't seem like someone who's going to go and flip and go to the other team. She seems to really like Nami. So you'd want to keep are her there but that's mm-hmm. something that happens especially when you don't go to tribal you get stir crazy you know and then you start to think about okay yeah we can do that we can do the easy first boot but then when you start to get your footing when you start to not have to go to tribal you, you have more time to think about what's the best move for me so you start to think maybe one tribal two tribal three tribals ahead you're not just thinking about surviving you're thinking about the end because you haven't had the reality of the first tribal Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really feel like that we saw the reaction from Hunter and we saw the reaction from Liz, Mm -hmm. which makes me think that Tevin could be making an error here because look how excited Hunter and Liz were to Mm -hmm. say, look, I didn't think that Tevin was going to want to go after Soda. That's Mm -hmm. that's great for me. And I think another thing as well, too, is... It's like not only a flag, like if the players are willing to jump in, it's like it's that flip where it's like, are they so targetable that you now want to use them as their ally, right? There's that other aspect where it's like, if no one wants to work with them, maybe I should work with them, like with Randon and Venus. That's one aspect. But then another thing as well, too, is, is it so obvious that why am I like, that's like a shield that I'm going to be then going and throwing to the wind. If everyone on my tribe knows that, soda's a threat when we go to merge if they're going to target us they'll target soda instead of me that's something we saw with caleb in 45 everyone's like caleb's charismatic caleb's amazing and then as soon as he hit merge beach caleb was enemy number one yeah it just seems like this is a big mistake i I don't know if we're going to get this in the Mm -hmm. pre-merge but um to go after somebody in your own tribe Mm -hmm. that you think is a threat who you're Mm -hmm. not even getting any sort of vibes that Mm -hmm. soda is is coming for tevin Hmm. Yeah, I just I think it's a little too early. Mm-hmm. I think that I but I also think that mistakes that are made early in the game, if there's a lot of game left, you can recover from it. But I think that you are closing off options, especially since Soda does seem very, very loyal to Nami. Yeah. Who else from Nami has impressed you? Um, Who from Nami has impressed me? I think that. One person that has really impressed me is Venus. I think that especially when you are, when it's very clear that people do not want to work with you, it can be very demoralizing, especially as fans of the game. You want to play that game where you're social, where you have connections with people. And it can be difficult to then stop that hiccup, like Mm -hmm. like to realize what am I going to do next if I'm on the bottom? But Venus is really fighting every snarky comment at a time. You know, and 
remember Venus at this point, she just lost her number one ally who was not yeah. able to give her the beware advantage. So she, like that's a, a blow as well too to her game. So I think that still being there, still being willing to play, and like now it, it didn't seem that people were throw, telling Venus about Soda, but it seems that she's in this position where it's like if she goes, keeps, stays another couple tribals, she can really go and set herself up, especially because it seems that she's very willing to play for herself and not the tribe. Okay, Marianne, you two played in an orange tribe yes. that had a team, a tribe member who got medically evacuated yes. from the game. Yes. Okay. What What's the morale like after something like that? Um, the mor at that point, when someone leaves the game, especially regardless of whether they're going to be voted or not, it's a really big blow because. I think everyone on the island understands the journey that they had to go to get to be there. And it can really be heartbreaking. And the morale part, when it, when when uh, Randon left and he's like, okay, y'all better win. That's mm -hmm. what it feels like. He feels like, I'm not going to go let this, per like, let this person leave for waste. It's like someone from this tribe has to win. Like, it's really that feeling of someone having to win. And you the have The winner is on this mat. That's what it felt. I, I remember once... Jackson left. I was, I remember just thinking, I'm like, someone from our tribe is going to win. Like, that's like point blank period. Someone from this tribe is going to win because that's the only way it can end. Okay. And you were right. And I was right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's talk about what's going on over at the Sega tribe. Yes. Because I, I really had some questions about what was going on with Jem and yes. what, she, what she wanted to have happen with the beware advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, in the first segment we got with her and, and, and in the last episode they showed us when she found it mm -hmm. and then she had the box and then we saw tonight that she was like hoping someone would, mm -hmm. someone would find the beware advantage and it was really like played up in confessional of like, hey, you gotta have fun when you're on Survivor. Mm -hmm. Come on. Like, it, well, we didn't get like, okay, and this is what I'm trying to, what I hope happens. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, you, you, you gotta have fun. Like, I personally didn't like it. I yeah. felt as if it was because the best case scenario of what you get is that no one finds it. But I feel as if the worst case scenario happened where you plant it, someone finds it, they dig, they don't find anything, and they now know someone on the tribe has it. And I think the risk that you, the suspicion comes onto you is way too high for me to then personally do that, you know? Because mm -hmm. then if, because like for example, it worked that people were like, I think it's Tim, I think it's Tim. But what happens if someone else is like, I think it's Jem, I think it's Jem? That's a whole nother risk. And then now people know about what you have to do for the next step. I think it's giving too much information. Right. I yeah. I, I kind of feel like that if you're going to do something like this, I think that you need to be proactive and it's like, okay, well, what's the next step? And it's mm -hmm. sort of like worked out that she got lucky that Mariah mm -hmm. was like, I think it was Tim. She's like, yeah, yeah. I, Tim, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Maria, did you hear this? And so, uh, but I'm sure well, like, what's Tim saying in his conversations? I bet he, he might be saying, yeah, you know who I think it is? Jem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like, I think that if you wanted this to go well, the way, like, I personally think that it's never good to plant a fake idol on your starting tribe because you never know when you'll need your tribe mates down the long run. And that's just so in distrust that you don't need mm -hmm. personally. But I feel as if, if you wanted to do that, Jem should have waited until she got the idol, got the key unlocked, and then planted a fake idol. So literally birdcaged it from 44. Then like planted it in, put it in, bury it, and then do the full step. So people are like, oh, I buried it. I found it. Great. I have my vote back. But mm -hmm. I just think that it just was, it for me, it was just a little too much like i feel as if like the if people are already suspicious of tim why throw more suspicion on tim their the bus doesn't need to be like it's just the the risk that it bounces like that it bounces back on you was too high for me yeah has yanu just lost so much that the other tribes are just making unforced errors because they're so bored and they don't have their own actual game to play you get stir crazy without going to tribal like you honestly do. And I think that like cerebrally, it's good that you're not going to tribal, but you want something to happen because people are playing survivor because they love survivor and survivor has tribals for better or for worse. So I think mm -hmm. that you really want to just be doing something. You want to be like, that's why we're seeing people like 
That's why we're seeing Na Nami, Nami going and targeting Soda. That's why we're seeing Jem going and placing the Beware Advantage because you just want to do something. And when you don't go to Tribal, it feels like you're not really playing Survivor. Yeah. So we have four episodes down, one mm -hmm. more to go. I mm -hmm. presume that we'll have one more in the three tribes and then we'll yes. have Mergatory the week after. One of these two tribes is going to make it through the merge, maybe both, without mm -hmm. going to the tribal council. That do you feel like a tribe needs to go to at least one tribal council before they get to the merge? Mm, I don't think so. I think that was shown in 41 where Erica did not go to tribal and was fine. She made it to the end and won. Mm -hmm. But I think that but her tribe was a disaster. That's true. But I think individually, you do not need to go to tribal. But for morale, if you are depending on your alliance, you need to go to tribal because there needs to be lines that are drawn in the sand when you are playing. So you understand, so you know that you can go and really back up who you're backing up with. I think that it's really important. Okay. I want to take questions from the audience, but would love to get, do you have any other thoughts about what you've seen in Survivor 46 over these first four episodes? General overall thoughts. So first thing about a thought, um, it's very clear that Jeff loves Banu. He hugged Banu yes. at the yes. end of the episode. Uh, like my, Banu said that Jeff was his guru. Yeah. And Jeff was like, no. And Jeff Uno reversed him. Jeff was like, no, like you need to go and recognize that you are also your you are your own guru. guru. And I remember my mom was shocked. Like my mom was like, I, no, she's going to watch this tomorrow in the gym. So I'm not going to do the action. She doesn't like okay. it. But she was okay. like, oh, my gosh, Bon, like Jeff hugged Bonnie. Jeff doesn't hug anyone. So like that was a really big thing as well, too. And another thing as well, speaking to tribal, I know some people, especially Connor, was like wondering, why didn't they go to vote? Like, it didn't make sense that they didn't go to vote and had questions about that. I think speaking from my experience of going to a no vote vote tribal, it, if a tribe doesn't go and actually do the process of voting, it's mm -hmm. something that has been unanimously agreed upon with the whole tribe. And it's yeah. also very clear from the vibes if that people don't want to vote, do vote. So you don't yeah. need to worry that production was meddling with anything because... Yeah, I don't think that should bother anybody. Banu did not have a vote. He did not have a shot in the dark. I mean, what like Je like they're gonna go vote, go vote, and Jeff will be like, I'll go tally the votes. Like, all right, first vote, Banu. Yeah, and that and and the Second voting vote, process Banu. and the voting process takes a while. Like, it's not just yeah. in and out. Like, that's an extra like 20, 30 right. minutes of. Marion, I didn't think they were going to go to tribal. I thought they were going to just like, because Jeff was just going to come to the beach. Like, all yeah. right, let's, let's, let's see. But honestly, if we didn't get Randon's medical evacuation in the last episode, I wonder if they would have just had like Jeff, like come to the beach and shake his hand and say, all right. And just bring him back. Yeah. We don't need to do the whole tribal thing tonight. It's like, let's, let's just have it's the night fine. off people. It's fine. We'll have the night off. Marianne. Okay. All right. So I know that mm -hmm. you are, um, as Julie Chen Moonves would say, a, a child, a of, child God. of God, a child of God. Did, did you, what did you think when Banu was cursing God? Oh my gosh. I, God, why did you bring me out here? Why did you l only let me go for mm -hmm. four episodes? I understand that completely, especially like if you're going and like you really want to go on Survivor and you're someone of faith and you've prayed about it and it's finally happening. It's like, you might feel, oh my goodness, this is like, I have this goal. This is happening. Like God's on my side. And when it feels like that's not synced up, there can be a lot of confusion and anger. And so really then questioning be like, why would you even place me here? It's like, why? Like, it's like, you're going to say, you're going to let me have the dream and then it's going to be crushed and beat down immediately. It's like you. So I really understand that. And I feel as if that, anger with what's happening with God is something that a lot of people with faith have experienced. I think it's very, I think it's a very like normal thing to experience, like especially that questioning, but it's really how you resolve. But you know, this is more for Julie Chen's uh, podcast. God 101. If God 101. Can hook up I on you, know. That would be I great. Know. Yeah. And I did think that in the end of like Bonu getting to tell mm -hmm. his story at tribal council. Like I, I did think that that was interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. The spin of like his background and talking about like how he grew up mm -hmm. and from, from where he came from and, and mm -hmm. growing up in that environment that you, everybody needed to be honest and look out for mm -hmm. each other. No, I think, 
And I think it makes so much sense, especially how he plays as well, too, where if from the environment you're going and everyone needs to be honest, you're supporting each other to go and make it to another day. Then if you're playing Survivor, you're like, okay, if I want to make another day in like a high stress situation, I need to be honest and I need to work with other people. So I think that there's just a disconnect as well, too. Like I feel that on another season that really might have worked. Mm hmm. You know, we didn't talk about then. Uh, there was a moment in the episode mm -hmm. where, okay, so it was very funny. Q was coaching up Bonnie. Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. So we have to practice, okay. And, you know, like uh, I may have participated in some fake tribal councils and <laughs> Q was playing the role of Jeff. Uh -huh. And they were working on what is Bonnie going to say at yep. the tribal council. Th th that was funny. And then there was a moment where then, uh, then he wanted to practice with Kenzie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Kenzie said, yeah, not right now. Can I get, can I get five minutes? Mm -hmm. And there goes Banu. Uh, he was uh, like, went, went, went off to go run, uh, run off into the bushes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it comes really with Kenzie was completely valid and completely okay with wanting to go and not practice with Banu. That was allowed. And even Q was trying to throw Banu a rope. Like, Ken, like Ken, uh, Banu was like, oh yeah, Kenzie, let's do it. And Q was like, maybe another time, maybe another day. But like, Banu really wasn't picking up what Q was trying to put down. And then Kenzie was like, I'm not having it. So like, I think that that rejection that Banu felt is valid. But I think that also Kenzie not wanting to go and pl like yeah. play Survivor while playing Survivor with Banu was also valid. But I also didn't even think that she snapped at him. No, that was not a snap. That like I think that's more of a discussion about how women navigate society, where okay. it's like if women are headstrong, if women go and are assertive, a lot of times it feels like that negative connotation. Like it's negative. It's not like you're going and being assertive and setting your boundaries. You're snapping at someone. You're angry at someone. You're bossy. You're sassy just because you, the person is getting upset. I think that just really shows more about how, as sometimes as women, we can't go and express feelings, especially anger or other in certain ways as men, because we had that negative thing. And then Kenzie then had to go and apologize she to Bonnie. Apologize to him. When she like I she didn't have to apologize. Do you want to play? No, I don't want to play. Like, no, like she didn't have to apologize. So like I think, you know, in the sense of the game, yeah, it makes sense to apologize game wise, but like in real life, she should not have had to apologize to Banu because mm -hmm. she did not want to play. She said no, should have been the end of that. Yeah. I, I'm like, maybe we missed something because then he was like <laughs> talking by himself. He's like, oh, I'm a stupid ass. Like, <laughs> <laughs> got real. It got real. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marianne, let's take some questions from the listeners. I just want to remind people that tomorrow's Survivor Know It Alls is going to be a little bit early. Okay. Noon Eastern for the oh, Know It Alls wow. with Steven tomorrow. Okay. So be on the lookout for. That one will be live at noon. Okay. All right. Um, here's a question from Jared Cross. Does Banu have a chance of surviving the vote if he didn't spill the beans about the journey? Hmm. I think that one thing that helped Banu in the previous tribal last week was that the flip on Kenzie happened in one night. If because if they survived, they didn't go to tribal. That's two more days of Tiffany thinking, is this the best move for me? Is this the mm -hmm. best move for me? And personally, I do not think it was the best move for Tiffany. And if Banu is continuing to be Banu, regardless of like the truth, but of like playing Survivor and not knowing and be wearing the heart on the sleeve, I think that Banu still was going home tonight. It's it, pretty hard to make because it did seem like that that's the thing that turned him mm -hmm. i i tend to agree with you about that you know would tiffany have come to her senses but i feel like that q has been pushing this agenda for almost mm -hmm. the whole game of like hey mm -hmm. we gotta get kenzie we gotta get kenzie and it seemed like that she was going to bite but i don't know i just think the cooler heads were gonna prevail ultimately but it that based off of the last episode that if they were going to that tribal that mm -hmm. she was going home Mm -hmm. And especially too with tr with uh, challenge strength with like Banu messed up and for and didn't go with the climb with the yeah. with the uh the whatever the 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 thing the thing in the dog. No, that the, was a big moment. Yeah, that's he a did, big. He didn't dive off the thing. Exactly. Maybe he can't jump. 
and, and <laughs> just yeah. like, no, no, Banu, you gotta yes. go back. So as someone who is Q, who is very challenge oriented, that could also be a big turnoff where it's like, I need to win. It's like, I've been like, I committed, I did my part, Banu, you need to do your part too. So that also was another uh, thing that would make it that Banu yeah. would go home. And Marianne, the rebounding too, where that like uh, the mm -hmm. Q was shooting and Banu was like nowhere to be found. And then it nope. seemed like in the, almost like the next shot, Banu was back on the dock uh, and then Tiffany was out in the water. Yeah. So like Banu, I, I really thought was going to be a very good athlete and mm -hmm. an asset to the team in these challenges. Uh, he, he really wasn't based no. off of what we've seen. No, not at all. And then also an aside, um, People need to jump with their with their with the legs. That whole jumping segment with Sega just not being able to jump. Like for number one, for for number one, the first one, the reward challenge with Maria. It's I re I realized when she was trying to flip it, she was just using her arm power. She wasn't using her legs as like for extra yes. momentum, for extra strength. And then also with Mariah, I don't think she's I, like. I, I don't know. I haven't met you, Mariah. Well, I don't know like how you jump, like what the movement is, but like, are you using your legs to like give yourself more momentum? Because like the way that you jump with the height, it feels that you're not like propelling with the legs. But of course, you were on the island, you practiced, maybe you just can't jump. And you're an expert, Marianne, in high uh, uh, intensity oh. interval training, correct? Yes. Yes. Hi. Oh, I had a thought about that, about hit. I cannot remember. Something about gassing yourself out. I'll have to. I'll have to come back to it. But yes, I do love hit, and it's a lot of box jumps. A lot of box jumps. So that's right. I am a jumping expert. It's good training. Okay. All right. How about Elizabeth? Not Elsbeth. Do you think that Tevin can get enough votes to get out Soda, or will this plan backfire on Tevin if Nami goes to Tribal Council? Hmm. I don't think it'll backfire on Tevin. I At least he has the votes if he wants I think to do it. I think he has the votes, number one. And I think that um, if Liz and Hunter are so gung ho about getting Soda out, it's not beneficial to them to then go and throw Tevin under the bus. And also, Tevin and Hunter seem very close if they mm -hmm. still have, if they're still strong in the alliance. So I think that even if it does come back to Soda, there's not really anything that can happen until merge. Then Soda can then go and be like, well, Tevin's doing this, 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 this. But pre merge, I think he's fine. Yeah, I mean, they have the Andy Griffith Alliance. Yes. Did you ever watch that, Marianne? I literally, I think, you know what? Why? Andy Griffith, I know, I've re I recognize the, the, I know what it is, but I never watched it. Okay. Did you have any TV alliances in Survivor 42? I told Omer that he was Christian and I was Gabby, but I wouldn't backstab him in the end. So. <laughs> okay. And then that was a TV show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not like Andy Griffith the lines like that. Okay. Speaking of TV shows, Saul Goodman wants to know, will Banu be on a returning season? Do you want, Jeff loves him. Jeff does love him. Um, I think with returning seasons, at least from, I think there's always that question about what can the player bring back in the gameplay and the way that they play. I think that one thing that's interesting about Banu is it seemed that Banu understood that he was playing the game wrong by the time he left. So maybe they would be interesting. Does Banu now know how, that lying is okay in the game? That truth doesn't really mean anything in the game? Wouldn't even lie to Jeff. I know. I wouldn't yeah. even lie to Jeff. So I think there's always a chance. I think there's always a chance. Like, for example, people didn't think Rob would ever go and return. Rob, Boston Rob. Boston <laughs> Rob. They were like, what's Rob doing there? They were like, What's poverty doing there? And look what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody was saying what's Boston Rob doing there. Boston. No, I think. Okay. Maybe some people, but not mm -hmm. all. Maybe some yeah. people were like, what's Amber doing there? Yeah. That, that people said that. There you go. I was, that, that was <laughs> you beyond, were a baby. No, I, w I was alive. I just didn't know survivor existed then. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about this quest? Actually, just with Banu, the all-star, I think if they did the right format, mm -hmm. I could see a scenario where they brought uh, Banu back. I, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, uh, a la a, you know, Survivor Philadelphia, like head versus heart type theme where it's like, mm -hmm. all right, players that really are like, they're going to play with their heart. Like, I think that that's the type of theme that you could see a Banu mm -hmm. returning for. So I think if there was like, they ended up doing like a theme season. Mm -hmm. Like I think that there are themes where 
he might be a good fit. But I yeah. think that probably in a vacuum, I think yeah. we got everything we're going to get about Abana. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Okay. How does Banu do if he's on a tribe of 10? Is Survivor doing a disservice to people like him by giving him zero wiggle room? I mean, he did survive three tribal councils and maybe almost four. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. Almost four. Uh, mm -hmm. No, it's, how would Banu do with a tribe of 10? I think, actually, Banu would do worse in a tribe of 10. Wow. And I think the reason why is because since there was no wiggle room, you had to use Banu's vote. But if in a tribe of 10, you have more options just because you simply have more people. And if you have a wild card like Banu, who both sides don't feel they can use, that can be just a collective easy, okay, let's just get Banu out because he's not a number for either people. So mm -hmm. I think he he might have actually done worse, like like maybe gone second. That's just wow. me, though. <sighs> yeah, I, I mean, um, he did survive a couple of votes. He did. Um, I th I think that he probably would be better in the mm -hmm. in the tribe of ten, but I, I just I, I don't know because I think that the other side would have numbers, and I just wonder if maybe like I, I I could see Q really wanting to target the players who were the active threats to mm -hmm. his alliance more. Here's my counterpoint. Sorry, I did just do a long pause there. Sorry. Here's my <laughs> counterpoint <laughs> with Banu. He has shown that he cannot execute a blind side no and when you have larger like larger tribes blind sides are more prevalent i don't think if you have a player that can't execute a blind side are you going to use them with a vote i don't like i don't think so mm -hmm. but when you have like six people and one vote and six people is one sixth of the is one sixth of the vote that's what 17 percent of a vote you <laughs> need Moche. you need to use you need to use him Okay. Here's a question from our friend Christian Hubicki, who you once wanted to be like an alliance with, with Omer. Mm -hmm. I can only assume that Charlie shouting Taylor Swift mid leap was a means of achieving superhuman lift. Thoughts? Oh my gosh. I think he should have said love on top because Beyonce did so many semitones like on love on top. You know what she's keeps on going higher? That would have been the best Definitely. lift. You yes. know, but sometimes, I don't know, maybe Charlie's afraid of heights. Because I know that if you're afraid of heights and you need to jump off something that high, you need to hype yourself up, you know? So that could have just been like the hype call to try mm -hmm. to, to make sure you jump off. Yeah. Now, speaking of uh, that challenge, uh, that did you notice that Jeff was doing all the Van Halen references? Do, do you even know what a Van Halen is? I, I, I do not know what Van Halen is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, Van Halen, this is like a real boost to the Van Halen popularity. Uh, that What's up with all the Van Halen references? I, I wouldn't know. I did not pick up on... Who is Van Halen? <laughs> exactly. Oh. I, okay. that, they're one of Ben's favorite bands, and apparently one of Jeff's. Oh, it's a rock... Well, Jeff is a part of the rock circle. Mm -hmm. He is. He's... Yeah. He's friends with what Foo Fighters? The Foo Fight Foo Fight? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But he's a part of the rock circle. Yes. Okay. Carson is in the chat. Carson wants to know since people have been discussing why Venus was sweeping, did Marianne and Rob also uh sw uh sleep or sweep uh mm -hmm. in the sand and the dirt on the shelter? For me personally, it was the sand. That's why we swept. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's a two part if I understand. Number one is where did you yeah. sleep? But number two did is you, that why did yeah. you sleep? Did you do sweeping before you did sleeping? Oh my gosh. I don't even think if we swept, it it's was hard when to we tell were... between sweep and sleep, and especially sleep. if you're lip reading. <laughs> if we swept, we swept one time and one time only. And that was when I was doing the sweat and savvy. I don't think mm -hmm. we ever swept at all and i slept on the on the sand so like sweeping it just i think sweeping is one of those things in survivor where it seems like you're doing something but it's a whole lot of nothing mm -hmm. but it seems like you're doing something so people are happy that you're doing something like palm frond weaving you do not need to weave palm fronds it's not yep. not useful but if you do it people are like oh you're doing something I think what was impressive was that Venus had, and I'm not sure if this was in the toolkit mm -hmm. or this was like a hunter invention of, she had a very impressive like survivor rate. Mm -hmm. that yeah. was very impressive. Um, 
I could tell you from, and, and I played in a different environment <laughs> than you all. Um, you do not want to sleep on the floor of the Amazon rainforest. It's a little wet. It's a little wet, and it's you. You don't know what else is down there. You okay. you know that's sort of like the floor. Leave that to the creepy crawlers. Okay. You want to be elevated. Trust me on that. Mm -hmm. um, what about in uh, Panama? Yeah. So I never uh, slept on the gr on the sand there. Okay. Um, I sort of like slept on kind of like a log. Oh, how was that for your back? I think it was fine. I don't know. It was fine. You know what, Marianne? The thing about me is that. I'm going to like go, go, go mm -hmm. until I'm going to hit a time of night and then it's time to pass out. That's it. Yeah, it's true. You are so exhausted when you play Survivor, just mentally and physically, that the nights for some people were great. Like I, I was one of the best sleepers. I slept like I think I think I got minimum six hours a night pretty much every night unless it was raining. Yeah. Yeah. I did not have a major problem with sleeping mm -hmm. on Survivor. Nope. No problem for me either. Okay. All right. Um. Glenn says, Liz didn't mention her net worth in this episode. Does that mean she's lost a ton of money or is she trying to lower her threat level? Um, I think that Liz didn't mention her net worth because there was no point where she could like where, where it's worth mentioning. Every time she's mentioning her net worth, it doesn't feel like it's like, oh, by the way, my net worth is this much. Like it just comes naturally in the conversation, mm -hmm. at least to Liz, you know, like, oh, what do you do? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, like, like maybe it's maybe this is the conversation. Oh, my gosh. Da, da, da. You know, there's this guy named Rob. He has podcasts. He does podcasting. Oh, I actually do podcasting with my job. Like I've been on this many podcasts in the past mm -hmm. year. Like I feel as if like no one just goes and just says, by the way, I do this. I think, and, and maybe she did mention net worth, but I don't think it was pertinent to the conversation. So she did. Yeah. It. Do you think that she could be using that as a shield? Oh my gosh. I think it's a mixture of both. You know, like I feel as if using talking about the net worth can be talking about the accomplishment that you have, especially as someone where it's like Liz was like, I was married, then I had a divorce and then I didn't know what to do. And then I managed to go and find myself. And now I am like a confident person because I have figured myself out. I'm successful. This is like me pushing myself even more. So it's that accomplishment part. But then also if Liz is a big fan of the show and talking about, oh, I don't need the money da, 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 and you speak about, I don't need the money, but I'm a loyal player. It could make people actually want to keep you longer so it could be a little bit of threat lowering as well too okay speaking of threats yes. brooke has a question will hunter be an early target post-merge because of his comp skills he's been so impressive in the challenges mm -hmm. he's been such a closer for mm -hmm. nami where he's always in that last spot where i feel like that sort of like the meta game is you don't want to be the person mm -hmm. who's always hitting the last shot because then Jeff really calls a lot of attention mm -hmm. to that person. Do you think that Hunter it could be in a bad spot? Um, I think that if he does really well on the first individual immunity, doesn't have to win, but if he mm -hmm. does win it, then he could be in a bad spot. And the reason why is that like, you can have people who are good, just like good at throwing good challenge, good challenge, uh, good challenge early on. But if they don't show that challenge immunity in the beginning, they can kind of like slink under and you forget about them for a bit. Unless like you're like a Jonathan where it's like you can't hide your physicality. Mm -hmm. But I think because Hunter has other qualities as well too big. He's a very social player. Like he has connections. He might be able to go and use those social bonds to then instead of then having to what I'm trying to say, having to then go and you be like, he's physical, let's get him out. They can go and choose someone else. I think that there's different options. We talked about the Yanu options where you have these three big players. Maybe they'll just want to take them instead of Hunter. You don't know his strategy as well, too. Maybe keep someone strong because he doesn't seem strategic. Sika still has six people. Maybe they're going to want to be like, let's just take a Sika member out and we'll figure out Hunter later. I think that there has to be a lot of different movements, a lot of different groups to make Hunter be the first initial name to think of okay question from leftist hominid what's the status of the m curse <laughs> dead or alive marianne has not had chance to activate has yeah because all the m's mariah 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 maria mariah mm -hmm. There's, it, they haven't gone to tribal yet but if it seems if what it seems to be it doesn't seem like either maria or mariah are 
in a bad position. So mm -hmm. maybe the curse of the M has finally been put to rest, but it, we won't know until we know. We won't know. Okay. Maybe that's the only way to beat the curse of the M is don't go to a tribal. Don't go to tribal. Emerge. Okay. All right. Renegade wants to know, what are Marianne's thoughts on Big Brother Canada 12? Who's her winner pick? Oh, my God. Gosh, I am, to be completely honest, I'm a little bit behind on BB12. I'm still watching. Yes. But the reason I'm behind, of course, you know, is the financing. But, you know, I'm a big spicy B girl. I love my Hamilton, my Hamtown. I think she's just such a dominant, but such like a volatile player. And as someone who's wa just there watching, it's something that is very, very interesting to see. I do. Okay. I love spicy B on the first or her first season. And I'm still going to root for her. That's my girl, and I'm going to stick by her. Okay, you're very loyal. Of yes. course, uh, that if you want to know everything that's going on with Big Brother Canada 12, stay tuned, everybody, because this man is standing by. <laughs> Taryn Armstrong is ready Yes. to take over when we get done for the BB Can 12 recap tonight. Rob, there was a lot of hype about this eviction episode. Eviction uh, night. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did it deliver? I don't know. You'll have to tune in, and we'll talk about it. Okay. All right. Was there as much crying as on Survivor? There <laughs> was actually a lot of it. So okay. it Ooh. might rival. All oh right. my gosh. Uh, that's pretty good. Taryn, do you have any parting words for Banu? You know what? He won me over at the end. Uh, I know there's a lot of people. What was that his pet peeve, Taryn? Disappointed. You know what? Listen, we don't have to talk about his pet peeves. Uh, <laughs> you know. Um, okay. <laughs> but I uh, I I liked it. I I I I think the guy's uh, he seems like a good guy. Seems mm -hmm. like a very nice guy. And yeah. Sure. And do yeah. you really want like all gamers on Survivor? Like, is that what you want? Do you want eighteen people who understand the game all fully well, okay. and they, play they, optimally? They, this is a loaded question for Taryn. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciated that it gave something that was kind of unique in Survivor. It was mm -hmm. more than just a, is it going to be Banu? Is it going to be Kenzie? They they did something different with it, which I did appreciate, even mm -hmm. though this probably should have been one episode, these last two. Yeah, I like that they didn't try to fake it to us of like, yeah, uh, exactly. you know, it could be Banu, but, you know, still Kenzie's a threat. Like, at least at least that they were, you know, not lying to us. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that was that was a that. huge relief, honestly. Actually, was, they did know. lie to us. They said my vote is for Banu. I'm gonna write Banu's name down, but Ooh. the names weren't written. We were lied to again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, call them out, Marianne. Don't yeah. let them. They can't keep getting away with this. They can't keep getting away with this. Yes. Okay. Not this again. Marianne, uh, earlier today, Taryn and I uh, got together to talk about uh, a big new show that's coming to Amazon Prime later on this year. Mr. Beast is Ooh. making uh, the very first, his first original reality show for uh, off of YouTube, Beast Games, Taryn. Yes. Speaking of, of format changes, we talked about like the implications of this. It's a huge deal. Uh, it's, a, it's a movement from YouTube to more conventional like reality show uh, formats, um, but he wants to maintain his own sort of viewpoint of it. And he's not exactly a reality TV person. He just has his own way yeah. of doing things. Whether you like that or not, I think that it could have a big impact on how these shows are made uh, because yeah. a lot of them follow the same formula. So we, we, we talked about it. Okay. Yeah. So check that out. Yeah. Uh, got into a little bit of uh, just covering a topic in the news and I uh, saw some nice feedback about that. So um, yeah, great, great job there, Taryn. And then stick around for Taryn's coverage of Big Brother Canada 12 tonight. Yeah. Should be a All good right, time. Coming up right after this. All right, Taryn. See you later. Okay. Yeah. Bye, Taryn. All right. Bye. All right. Marianne, let me tell you about what else is coming up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All the Survivor podcasts. We are just getting started. Steven, the exit interview, the patron feedback show. Shannon's going to be back. Why Blank Lost, the B&B, &B, the Purple Pants podcast. And then don't forget about Club Condo. Ooh. Now, Marianne. Yes. Okay. What are we? We're skipping. We're, uh, the Amazing Race is going to be back tomorrow. <laughs> Mike and Jess, it's actually airing right now. Mike oh, and yes. Jess are going to be covering it all season long with great, amazing race guests. And tomorrow, Luis and Michelle Ooh, will join them. Gets. Yes. Uh, are you an amazing race person? Oh, my gosh. I, if, I'm i the filthiest of casuals. Like, I'll watch, like, one or two episodes here mm -hmm. and there, but I'll watch a couple of them. 
Okay, check that out tomorrow on Thursday. Jess is going to have an amazing race. exit interview as well. Deal or no deal island. How about that one, Marianne? I don't know where to find it in Canada. Oh, okay. Well, I can't help you with if that. If someone but... tells me, it might be on Crave, you know, because things are on different things. Like Amazing Race and Survivor are not mm -hmm. on the same network in Canada. They're on different networks. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, look, um, it's got to be somewhere, right? It's got to be some. Well, you think we didn't get the Trader season one until season two came out. So you would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Deal or no deal, Island. What are you even doing? Okay. All right. Well, we had a great time every mm -hmm. week talking about it with Jenny and Chappelle. So check that out. Make sure you subscribe to all of our podcasts at robinswebsite.com slash subscribe. Okay. Marianne, we, uh, Scott in the chat says City TV. Okay. So that would be crave then because i don't my parents have cable i mm. do not i have this is not a promotion i have stack tv though i find i have stack tv and then i also have crave which is like you can't watch live but you can get everything the day after those are like my two big streaming ones okay all right maximus bomb in the chat says marianne is a great co-host you you are really locked in tonight thank you thank you i really try to do my best to give good insight because that is what i wanted when I was listening to this as a little baby non-player. Mm -hmm. Now you said when I was listening to this. As a little baby non-player. Okay. All right. But you're still oh. listening? Yes, I still do listen. Yes. Okay. Well, I thought you did an incredible job. Uh, I mean, Thank you're such you. a polished podcaster now. Thank you. You know what? It's from the time when um Steven, I ate him. I kind of absorbed some of you his podcasting. Him. Yeah. Yes. And then it really it really increased my podcasting skills. So that was a really good time in my life, you know? Okay. All right. Well, great job. Marianne, what else is coming up for you? Oh my gosh. Um, you know, other than the little wedding that is yep. coming up in less than three weeks, really nothing. Around the corner. <laughs> That's a pretty big thing, though. Yes, it is a big thing. It's very exciting, very fun. I think it's just like I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's actually it's actually happening. Like I'm, mm -hmm. like I'm, like we we like we have it's less than a new era season. It's away. less than a new era season. Like we have the license just in the just sitting on the table, like like a whole life like the because you know once you get your marriage license for those who might have gotten married you have i think it's 60 or 90 days depending on your jurisdiction where you can mm -hmm. actually get married so like we have the paper like we we bought the license like we could just i could leave right now and get married if i wanted to like i could wow. i could leave right now i know right i don't think my parents would be happy but okay. i could do it okay well look maybe you're a rebel maybe i'm a rebel maybe i am a rebel mm -hmm. Okay. No, but uh, I was on the Titans, though. Speaking of the guys. Rebels and the Titans, <laughs> Heidi in the chat wants to know, when will the Survivor Australia catch-up happen with Shannon? So Shannon, I believe, uh, I'm sh is going to drop her finale coverage soon. I'm not sure if that's out yet. Mm -hmm. But I think the plan right now is that I'm going to catch up with Shannon on Friday. And Shannon has exit oh. interviews as well. So uh, looking forward to talking about the finale. No spoilers of no Australian Survivor. No okay. spoilers, but Shannon does an amazing job in everything that she does. Of course. Yes. Except the draft. I'm not going to say anything for fear of my life. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think she still has all her people, right, for this season? I think so. And she's she, still, she's tied for first for best average placement, but never won, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Marianne, great job. Uh, looking forward to a big Thursday with Banu and with Steven coming up. So be Thank on the lookout you. for that. And patrons, get ready for our uh, patron of Friday feedback show coming up on Friday afternoon. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Thank Bye. You. Bye.